My name is Jane Oates. I'm the president of Working Nation. Working Nation is thrilled to be a partner with the U.S. Chamber Foundation on an exciting new initiative called Talent Finance. Today, we get the incredible opportunity to speak to Sheila Baer, an author, a college president, the head and senior leader of many federal regulatory agencies. Sheila, hi, how are you? Hi. Hi, Jane. I'm fine. How are you? Good. Thank you. Why is it so important in today's economy and today's labor market to be having these important conversations about new approaches to financing and investing in talent? Right. So I think our current uh, way of financing higher education in particular is is very debt focused and, and debt is very rigid and there are no real metrics or accountability about outcomes when students borrow uh, to pay for their college or higher educational training. And so this has led to a system that is, is somewhat static and unaccountable and has not responded as well as it should to a very uh, dynamic and rapidly changing economy. Uh, the pandemic is accelerating trends that we saw prior to the crisis, uh, more digitalization, more remote provision of services. Yet again, the, the current debt-focused system that is not aligned with outcomes is really not well-equipped uh, to make our economy as, as, uh, as agile and adaptable as it needs to be. It seems to me that the two biggest investments that we make in our lives are our homes and our education. Right. What are the parallels in these investments, and how are they yeah. different as we think about financing options? I, I do think that, uh, you know, in finance, we talk about there's good debt and then there's bad debt, right? <laughs> and good debt really is an investment. Uh, you borrow to invest in something that is going to make you financially better off down the road. And done right, both uh, student uh, debt as well as debt, mortgage debt, to buy a home can be very uh, helpful in building wealth and financial security, but it needs to be done right. Most of all, it needs to be affordable, but not all houses will be good investments, not all educations will be good investments. And again, get, that gets back to why this uh, talent finance project is so important to make sure that the training we provide, particularly this debt finance, has to be good quality, has to be responsive to labor market needs, so that when those kids get their degrees, they can get good paying jobs that will help them fulfill their dreams and will also contribute to our labor force and our economic dynamism. In 2019, you and your son, Preston Cooper, by the way, an accomplished yeah. writer on the economy himself, yes. uh, wrote a terrific article, a very in-depth piece on income share agreements. And yeah. I wanted to just stop for a second and, and ask you blank, point blank, why did you write last year about income share agreements? And then, of course, uh, why do you think uh, the chamber is interested in those as well. Well, I, I, I like an equity model more than a debt model for higher education. Uh, equity financing is another way to invest in your future, but in a way that aligns with whether you actually achieve a good outcome from your education. So income share is kind of become a, a, a tainted word, unfortunately. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about income share. Income share is simply a way to finance education so that instead of having a fixed debt obligation, once you complete your education, you have a flexible obligation based on how much you actually earn. So it's, it's a good way to make sure that you've actually achieved a premium with your higher education by not having an obligation to repay until you hit a certain income threshold. And then above that threshold, it's an affordable percentage of your income. I think that's much better, you know, for young people, they're facing so many uncertainties about what, they, what kind of debt they'll actually be able to afford, even with a lot of care and research. Income share is a way to take some of that risk off of them by tying their repayment obligation to what they actually earn. Why do you think it's important that the U.S. Chamber Foundation get involved in this and in this whole talent finance initiative? Well, I think income share is, is definitely a way to align educational uh, training with labor force needs because I think it would make colleges and students more uh, attuned to, uh, you know, the outcomes that that education will achieve in the labor force. So it, it's an elegant way to align economic incentives or educational institution with labor, for, labor uh, force needs. And I think that's, that will help employers. I think some employers are getting more involved in financing income share arrangements as well, 
which again can help them uh, provide a solution to provide a better trained workforce for their own needs, but in a way that's going to be affordable to the student and will take some of the risk of outcomes off of that student and, and on to the uh, entity that is financing the income share, which is, which is going to be better, and the school, which is going to be better, um, better equipped to, to assume that risk.